All right, guys, welcome back. In this video, we are going to be drawing a Gantt chart for an activity that we have the table of dependencies for. So um, if you stick around till the end of the video, I'll also link to a different video that goes over the network diagram of this exact project. But for now, we're focusing on the Gantt chart. So uh, we have, uh, as always, in our table of dependencies, we have all of our activities, their predecessor, predecessor relationships, and the duration of each activity. So with the Gantt chart, we want to start with any activity that does not have a predecessor. There could be more than one activity, but in this case, it's only activity A. So we're going to see that activity A is, has a duration of three days, and we're going to come over to our chart that we've set up here. Usually you want to use like a graph paper or something uh, basically like with the coordinate axes. Graph paper is a bit easier to see and to line up uh, as we go. So with activity A, it's three days. So we're going to start at the beginning at zero. That's the beginning of the first day. And we're going to come over one, two, three days just like that. Now, activity B is going to be the next one in our table of dependencies, so we'll just jump straight to that. It depends on activity A, so it can't start until activity A finishes, and activity B is four days long. So we come over to our Gantt chart, we see activity A finishes here at the end of the third day, so that's where activity B is going to start. Also, it's technically this line here is the beginning of the fourth day. So we're going to start here, and we're going to have four days, so we're going to go over one, two, three, four, and now we have activity B. All right, moving on, we're gonna go to activity C. It also depends on activity A, so it can't start until activity A finishes, and it has a duration of two days. So we're gonna come find where activity A finishes. We're gonna follow that down to activity C. So this is where we're going to start, and we're gonna have two days, so we're just gonna pop over to here. That's one and two. All right, moving on, the next one is activity D. It can't start until activity B is finished, and it's five days long. So again, we're going to locate where activity B finishes. It's here at the end of the seventh day. And then activity D is going to start at that point. Technically, it's also the beginning of the eighth day. And we're going to come over one, two, three, four, five days. All right, the next one is activity E. So activity E depends on C. So it can't start until C is finished, and it's one day long. So again, we're going to come over to activity C. It ends here at the end of the fifth day. We're going to drop down to the line for activity E. And E is just one day, so we can just draw it on right here. And then activity F is our next one. It also depends on C, and it's two days long. So again, we come, we see where C ends. And it's going to be in the exact same line. It's going to start at the same point as activity E, and this one is going to be two days long. Now, activity G depends on D and E. So activity G can't start until D is finished or E is finished. Both of those have to be finished before G starts, and G is four days long. So let's figure out where those are. Activity D is right here. It's going to end at the end of the 12th day, and activity E is right here. It's gonna end at the end of the sixth day. So we can't start until both of those are done, so we clearly have to start here after the end of the 12th day. So that's where activity G will start, and it's four days long, so it's gonna be one, two, three, four. And activity H is a sort of similar scenario. It can't start until F and G are both finished. So what we're going to do is we want to figure out where does F finish? Well, F finishes here at the end of the seventh day, and G finishes here at the end of the 16th day. So we can't start H until both of those are done. So clearly we can't start until after this point. So that is where activity H is going to start, and it is three days long, so it'll be one, two, three. And that's going to take us until the end of the 19th day. So what we can draw from this is that this project uh, is going to be 19 days, as long as nothing goes wrong. And that was not clear to us when we first looked at the table of dependencies. You just see the individual duration and their relationships to each other, but it doesn't tell you the actual project duration. But from the Gantt chart, we can figure that out. And from the Gantt chart, we have a nice visual representation sort of as one activity finishes, kind of where we go and move on through the rest of them. So hopefully that's helpful. Um, I'm going to put up a link on the screen for the video of this exact same project, but we're doing the network diagram. We're going to do the forward pass and the backwards pass, and we're actually going to find the critical path of this project. So it's on the screen. Do check that one out, and hopefully that is helpful as well.